Welcome everyone back to TNO, the last season of Europe in which we're playing as, of course, Norway. Now, <clears throat> as you can see on the screen right now, uh, it, the last video, I was unsure whether or not we had more content, but we have the Millord coup. The last 20 years have seen the jack boots of tyrants stomping down the corridors of power. The German brutes have long oppressed the peaceful and democratic populace, shooting any dissenters and raping its agriculture for the good of the Reich. The disillusion of the Tobolvans administration heralded a little change as the fascist pigs in the national Samling regime squabbled over the power vacuum. What the citizens of Norway did not expect, however, was such a drastic change in leadership. In the early hours of the morning, the resistance organization Milor gathered as many men, women, and supplies as they could muster and overran the city of Oslo. In the bloody coup that followed the collaboration of scum were ousted from power, and the parliamentary and its traitors have been duly arrested. The organizer of the revolution and leader of the Milor, the grizzled rebel Newt Moyen, has declared the formation of a new provisional government, while Moyen's leadership will temporarily enforce authoritarian measures. With it is the it is the legal it is the goal of transforming Norway once more into a functional democracy. Democracy prevails. Great. And we have no more neutrality. Ooh, we have a little bit more content. That free at last. We thought this day would never come. No, could not come. And yet, by God's grace, here we are. After a score on years under the German boot to the Mill Org has finally occupied Oslo and the collaborators driven out, the Norwegian people are finally free. And to get uh, this under Nut Moyen, we need to have done or get, gotten as liberal as possible. So we went with by the cities. We went with the so basically the same focus changes, but just with all the decisions, we have to be as liberal as possible to get down this way. But, purge of collaborators. The Huns have fled with their trails between their legs, and Norway is finally free from Nazi influence, or is it really? Can it even be truly free when so many traitors other people are still allowed to stand? Any and all Nazi collaborators within our borders will be dug out and dealt with the same way they earned themselves during those two long decades. And for the National Assembly, however, much of it is even after our round after our purge. It shall never begin to be allowed to have a say in government. We get le legal purge. Very cool. And they'll have assuming control. The collaborating administration has been properly dealt with, and, and, and as a result, our cabinet is almost entirely empty, yet the nation is still in complete disarray, and the occupation left no party in a condition to effectively rule even over a stable Norway. We didn't start our fight with the ambition to rule, and yet we are the only ones who can put an end to the chaos. The Maloric shall carry the burden of establishing a provisional government and assuming control of all necessary matters in Norway until order is restored. Once more, the fate of Bolton's moderates. Oh boy. Uh, let's go into that one now. As we clean up bureaucracy and legal structure, a decision regarding P. Borten's, Borten's so-called moderates coup has come up. Or moderates. Though he proclaims now to be an honest Norwegian patriot, he nevertheless participated and propped up the National Assembly for our more radical members. This alone is enough to prove that he and his ill can't be trusted and needs to be removed from all positions in government with the utmost scrutiny. Still, we need a broad so base of support. If we want to stabilize our nation and resist potential German attempts at regaining their influence, maybe involving the moderates would prove to be more beneficial than it first seems. It'll take some time to retain completely untainted bureaucrats, after all. Hmm. Jonas Leisto here. Berg Lofsnes. Lunda Pavotin. Let him be for now. They should be purged as well. Yeah, let's do that one. Return of the King. When the Oxpuljon began, King Hakon VII staunchly refused to recognize the quizzing regime the Germans set up and eventually was forced to flee to Great Britain and then Canada along with his family and several other nobles to escape persecution. But he never abdicated during his exile, neither as his son Olaf V upon his death. And even from abroad, they kept serving as a rallying point for the resistance all these years. It is time now for the Glücksburg family to return to its rightful place in Norway. Preparations are already underway for the arrival of Olaf and his family, who has accepted our invitation back to the country and forced to a coronation in Oslo that the King of Norway truly does deserve. <clears throat> and the settler question, we shall rebuild Norway together. As the violent enthusiasm that came with independence reverts to the boring, sometimes bleak reality of life, the people start to show their wear and tear. The Norwegians have been through many hardships these two decades, and even though freedom is yet to lift the weight of life for many. Now that we're no longer at the actual brink of ruin, our citizens have at uh, best, have almost no motivation to keep working, at worst, seek to be finally left alone to attend their estate in peace. This attitude is understandable, but the road to a national recovery is still long, and we cannot afford to go on in the state. A massive propaganda campaign will take place within the next few days to reignite the people's vigor and remind them of their duty to help in the reconstruction of the country at this time of need, starting with the king himself addressing the people. Cool, we get more weekly stability. That's very nice for two thirds of a year, not bad. And poverty will begin to improve, which is. Great, great, great. Something I always love, 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 love. And uh, when is this going to be done? Return of the King? Oh, wow. We still have two weeks left. Wow, that's going to take a while. And we're still watching uh, the German Civil War occur. Hadris is still alive, barely. Speer has been literally been pushed down, and he's pushing down into Bowman. Hopefully, Goring loses, just because I don't want to have to end up defending against Goring and overwhelming German superiority. So, 
That'd be pretty darn bad. Oh, look at that. Burgundian system, anyone? Oh, it went bye-bye. Oh, that sucks. Burgundian system, Norway when? We shall rebuild the coronation. For the first time since 1954, Olaf was truly scared. He placed a firm hand on the trembling right leg and took a deep breath, turning his gaze to the window. A glimpse of daily life flashed like, past like images on a film reel. He saw a mother with a child, a woman walking her dog, a citizen marching down the street with a stiff gait and a high chin, a military man. Olaf smiled. He himself had served as a general in the Second World War, so desperately he had wanted to remain with his fellow Norwegians as the Nazis pushed onwards, but his father would not have it. He would be more useful in exile, he was told, but what use was a fleeing man? What was he when the Germans stormed England as snowy Canada drew near, so did the fire within him rage harder? The horrors of the 1940s felt like another lifetime. As much as he had loathed his exile, nothing in the world would make him regret the safety and comfort it brought his family. Olaf's father had lost a spark in his eyes, but his children gained theirs. Through it all was Matha, beloved Matha, a soft touch in days of weakness, a soothing voice in the nights of anger and tears. Not once did she lose her smile, even as the cancer slowly stole her away. His father died just three years later. Never again were they to feel Norwegian snow upon their faces. The people's king, they called him, apparently. What did Olaf's speeches and meetings really mean in the safety of his Canadian residence? The common people sacrificed their lives, families, and spirits for Norway, yet he was a symbol of resistance? Their images outside the window had changed. Crowds of people were screaming in the streets, holding signs and chanting. The cards, the cards came to a stop. The doors opened. Olaf took a deep breath and exited. Cheering it hit him like a crum crushing wave, nearly knocking the strength from his legs. He floated towards Nirados Cathedral, and the cameras watched eagerly as he seated himself on the throne. The coronation felt like a dream, a heavy crown was placed upon his head, and with it came the weight of the whole nation. He knew his words were to be broadcast in every household throughout the country. I am home, the king Ola Olaf said with his Olaf said with a steely gaze, even as his eyes watered, I am home, and the people of Norway will never suffer again, I promise. Good sign Valkona God. I don't know what that means, but probably thank goodness or something like that, but Tear down the Nazi codes. With the nation we inherited from the Germans, we also inherited the bureaucratic mess they left behind. A complicated slew of organizations and legislation needed to handle the exploitation of Norwegians, many of them as nonsensical as they were cruel. As it is time for all those good codes to go with the way of the creators and be phased out of our system, so in their place we can restore old legislation, where it still works, and replace it with brand new laws where it doesn't. As for the rare German organization which actually serves to modernize a nation and not oppress its people, it shall be given a new coat of paint and have the Nazi rhetoric peeled off and be integrated into our own in which we outlaw slavery, which might be a pretty good thing. And security service becomes a police service, and penal slavery becomes with incarceration. All right, and militarized, military police with rules of engagement. Not bad. We should rebuild Norway. And look at that flag. It's a pretty nice flag. Pretty darn nice. And then let the people speak freely. Now that the Nazis era of legislation has been erased and replaced, the Germanization policy nationwide has been, needless to say, what we call indefinitely postponed. Now we can officially restore the status of the Norwegian language as the official tongue of the nation. Additionally, with the German censorship laws revoked, the time is right to legally reinstate unrestricted freedom of speech. As part of our new constitution, for the first time in 20 years, the Norwegian folk will once again speak their mind. We lose some political power, but that's fine. We get some free speech. We lose political power gain, ideology drift defense, and we get some more stability, so hey, not too bad. Not too bad. And they'll probably do the matter of partisans. The Reds are a potential threat, but they did help us fight the Germans. Maybe it's time to bury that hatchet for good. Oh boy. And we have quite a bit of naval speed, too. But let us bury the partisans, or the matter of them. Dealing with the Germans was an easy choice, but soaring our schisms at home might not be so. The support of the leftist partisans, both within the Milorg itself and through the NKP's free army, proved to be an immense and crucial help in our missions during the Okshu Pashon, as well as our final victory against the Germans. Some, some even say victory could never come without them. And yet, with their freedom secured, this help is now starting to prove regretful. The communists expect their voluntary sacrifices to be recognized and are awarded for, and now demand representation in the government to be. Many of the bureaucracy, as well as our own ranks, are repulsed by the idea of working with a socialist and would gladly take any chance to nip the left wing in the bud, on the other hand. At this point, it's unsure if we could actually contain the growing socialist influence, even if we tried. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, do you think? And we'll also grab some more land doctrine. Very nice. And more land doctrine after that, too. Cool. Little bit of lag and motorized. Better motorized. Uh, work with the left. Trade unions. All trade all unions will be legal. Emphasize national unity. Or no king of communists. Well, what about the unions? Matters of the partisans, thank you. Uh, you know what? Work with the left is cool and all. Well, I like the poverty change. 
emphasize national unity. You know what? Maybe we'll work with the left for now. The NKP's influence in our politics and our peoples both is already too big to counteract at this point in the time, and frankly, the contribution to the resistance too great for us to deny without seeming hypocritical to everyone. Besides, there is a persistent law. Kick them out now, and they'll be simply keep lurking about, organizing their ranks underground and scheming their eventual takeover, just like they have been doing against the Germans for the last 20 years. Our only sensible choice right now is to work with the left best we can, not only so that they will be appeased through appeased enough to let us do our work, but also to keep their activities in check. Attempt to steer them towards the immediate rebuilding of our nation more than our disposition. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer, the saying does go. <clears throat> But we shall emphasize national unity. O oh, people of Norway, united against your former oppressors, will you now waste your freedom in raising your arms against each other? Will you let your allegiance to your cause influence your decisions more than your companionship to our, your fellow man? Will you, O oh, people of Norway, let the Fuhrer laugh from his office as he watches us tear each other apart to the ground harder than we ever could? Each one of us has a different idea of what a new, rebuilt, great Norway must look like. Vastly different at times, but in the end, this is what we're all here for. To rebuild Norway anew, to restore its former shrine and glory. And this is what we must concentrate now, not to... Not to the petty details of tomorrow, but to the work that needs to be done here and now. And to this, let us all drink this evening in the company of everyone who wants to see this nation strong. <clears throat> The settler question. Even as German rule has finally been overthrown in our lands, the effects of two decades of Nazi administration are quite more permanent, for most of which belongs to the numerous Germans who have settled in our lands during Nazi rule some for many years now. Deciding what to do with these settlers has been problematic, to say the least. On one hand, most of the settlers didn't actually participate in Norwegian politics or in the atrocities committed, and many of them actually are fairly behind lucrative enterprises that could help us. On the other hand, these people still know what was happening in, Norwe in Norway when they came here and why the Germans wanted them here, and they were perfectly content with the implication. And as for the people, oh, the people who seriously want them gone. They just occupy our land, farm cities, but repatriating them will prove to be very costly. Besides, there are fellow Germanic brethren. Perhaps integration is possible. So we will have Germanization here, but cautious acceptance. Segregation. We love segregation. No racial integration with segregated elements. Versus back to Germany. Oh boy. And seize their properties? Well, we're going to do cautious acceptance. We're going to accept everyone here no matter what. No matter how and why they arrive here. The German settlers came here civilians looking to make a new life from, away from their past. Away from Germania even. At, and at any rate, most of them have stayed, truly stayed here long enough to consider this place their home. <clears throat> if we were to oust them from their new lives back into a land that might not even consider them their own anymore, how are we better than the Germans? Of course, this does not mean that everyone will be allowed to live like they used to during German rule. Those settlers must be integrated into our society post haste, and those who do not become upstanding Norwegian citizens, just like they owe to us, or owe to, will be back sent to their homeland anyways. Cool. <clears throat> Tolerate the German language, though. One of the main roadblocks to the integration of these settlers proves to be the language barrier. The Quisling regime had established German as the nation's official language, and indeed many of the settlers had never learnt a lick of Norwegian, unfortunately. If we expect the integration process to go smoothly, we will have to contend with this for a while, and tolerate the German language long imposed on us for at least a little while more as the German settlers learn to speak Norwegian on a sufficient level. So, if we're going to accept the commies, we're going to accept the Germans here, too. So... <clears throat> These are properties, huh? That'd be kind of nice, but we will have to do our job is done. One party state with a multi party system, we lose political power, get more stability, and lose ideology to defense. So, well, so be it. The provisional government shall dis be disbanded or allow popular government to take its place. The change of popularity of authoritarian democracy goes down. Wow. We got quite a bit more social democracy here. All right. Wow. That's going crazy. Bye bye, Hadrich. I guess Hadrich died. But our job is done. It has been many arduous months since we took the reins on a nation young and broken, but we do have finally accomplished all that we've set out to do. The collaborationists have paid for the truths, and the policies and institutions still clinging from the days of the Nazis have been erased and replaced with their own. And order has been restored throughout the nation. The transitional period is over, and Norway is finally ready to begin to function and develop as a modern functioning nation. <clears throat> this in turn means that our job here is done, and our services no longer need be needed. The Malorg must step down, the provisional government controls disbanded, so that free elections can take place, and a de democratically elected civilian government can take charge from here on out. Well, we'll see about that. That'd be cool if we can get, kind of get counter cooed once uh, the Civil War in Germany is done with, but yeah, you never know. <clears throat> and though, of course, we will hold some good old elections. Oh, goodbye, President Kennedy. Hope you uh, hope your family's doing okay, but hold elections. It was back in 36 that the Norwegian people last had a say on how they should be governed ever since then. It was considered gift enough that they were still around to be governed at all. Stick around they did, though, to see the day that the Hun no longer loomed over their heads. This day shall stay in history as a day we return from the people their self-determination. The first election after the occupation will be organized nationwide shortly until after the... After the until recently defunct political parties get a chance to stretch their limbs and run their campaigns. And once the ballots close, Norway will finally be truly, truly free. Cool. And we have three weeks left for technology, too. And currently, social stuff is, let's see. Oh, Borman. Oh, thank goodness, Borman won. Academic base. 
Agriculture, poverty rate. Well, then again, Borman can still probably beat us up, so. That's not very good. Army professionalism is still going up. Ex industrial expertise is going up as well. Nice. Hold elections. And then neutral, no more. No more neutrality, shall we? Before the German invasion, Norway was enjoying more than a century of peaceful neutrality, content to simply observe any and all wars in Europe from afar. But gaze now. Gaze at a Norway ravaged from 23 years of plunder and oppression. Gaze at the wonders neutrality has done for us. And the people gaze too. They no longer sit back and let their freedom to depend on the goodwill of others. It is time we take our fate back into our own hands and renounce our neutrality officially. Our army must become strong and our allies plentiful so that this, from this day on, our sovereignty shall be uh, properly enforced by more than words on a paper. Oh, a return to democracy, shall we? After we do some more uh, land doctrine. Thank you. Thank you. And then, actually, engineers. Uh, well, let's see if we can grab anything else here. That's a little bit ahead of time. Anti-air, I don't want to do. How about some mountaineers? Norway, one of the prime countries of Scandinavia with beautiful northern lights dotting adorning the frigid cold as years upon years of hatred have been dealt upon the land savaged by the GGR. Now... For the first time in years, the people of Norway, prideful of their past, present, and now their future, have the opportunity to decide how they should be governed, or how they should govern themselves in the midst of the newly established democracy. Nationalism has surged in the north, as finally the people have gotten their wishes of Norway for the Norwegians. However, not as all common peace for the, for the Norwegian people. Rather, the Malorg-led government has to exhaust all resources on organizing the preparedness for a transparent election. The Norwegians are, in fact, lucky, as they've managed to garner several broad choices for who ought to lead their new democracy. Firstly, Alv Kujols, le leading the Horge, who has been supported by the most of the conservative elements of the Lord for his plan to return to tradition and favor strengthening of the Norwegian people and their newfound independence. Next, Gunnar Gardwals led the Venstra into the great pockets of both middle class and upper, support, upper class support for his desire to hold economic programs as being the primary focus for getting Norway back on track to, on the international level. Einar Gudhodsen has led the mainstream leftist elements in forming the Arbeiterpartei, leading a movement to centralize government efforts and aim low towards upholding the people's needs is a primary issue for Norway going forward. However, the past past the mainstream tickets vying for leadership within the crags and mountaintops of Norway, the Lorg has found a surprising openness for the parties and the allowance of the socialists within the socialistic Folkpartei, or SFP, led by Nut Lofsnes, a direct target for some of the extremists within the Lorg, therefore. Lofsnes has thumped the reports and argues with fire and scorn over the need of a decentralization of the Norwegian government, with its primary focus only for the direct aid of the citizens within, rather than focusing on the other matters such as military or trade. After months of preparation, the candidates have prepared the claims, the posters have been handed out, the speeches have been held, the debates have been argued out as well. Without a countryman unaware of the political battle, Norway's fate is in the hands of the people. Um, I don't really know. It seems like they could go any sort of way here, alone in the dark. It seems like it doesn't really matter too much. Um, hmm. Apata Patit. Let's see. Social democracy. So we want social democracy. Gunna Garbo. Liberal democracy. Alves Jos. Traditional Norway. Um, SFP. Sverd Peterson. I kind of want to see that one. Uh, libertarian socialism. That'd be kind of wild. We went, we went radically that way, but, uh. Um, I'm not really sure. Ooh, part of the conservative elements return to the tradition, strengthening the Norwegian people and their newfound independence. Gunnar Garbo. Maybe we'll try Garbo. Well, maybe try that one, maybe. I don't know. And who are the by? Oh, well, he's okay. If so, does, were, were any of the other three leaders, like, handsome? Because that's the most important thing to ask when, uh, you're selecting your leaders. Are they handsome? The 1968 elections? To do? Suck Dems? Lib Dems, Con Dems, Lib Socks. Well, I guess we did go with Lib Dems, so... Okay. Alone in the dark. Norway has, been, has won its greatest struggle, yet has come out of it stronger and more determined than ever before, but a much greater and longer challenge looms ahead of us. We're between few... We are, but, we are between but few to have escaped the Germans' grasp for long, and that means that Norway stands completely alone in a Europe so dominated by the Nazis. We cannot afford to be an island of our own when the German Ocean threatens to drown us at any moment. In these turbulent times, we need to reach out into the world for allies, and plenty of them, if we want, to survive. Now, if we went libertarian socialism, we still might be unable to go to join the OFM, but across the Atlantic. The most obvious way to look for allies is at the other side of the ocean. The U.S. has been trying to find an entry point into Europe for decades, and the president must be practically drooling at the prospect of a jumping-off point merely 500 kilometers from the German coastline. Heck, it's a wonder they haven't even tried to contact us, and they'll most likely will attempt it soon enough. 
It is, it is in our interest to save them the effort and ensure them of our goodwill ourselves. A diplomatic mission must be prepared to leave for Washington immediately, asking the President to recognize our sovereignty and hinting at a willingness to work with the OFN and its associates. Please, can we get a guarantee of independence? I would love American interventionism into European conflict. Please, 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 please. Alone in the dark. Nordic cooperation. Public opinion on our neighbor Sweden has been fairly divided ever since the war. While the rest of the world was on fire, the Swedes simply sat and observed as we were overran and enslaved by the Huns. And even today, they sit comfortably and contently within the German sphere out of our own volition. Or their own volition. But at the end of the day, they are still our Nordic brothers, and with the rest of the world defeated, it would make maybe too much to ask of them to jump at their own doom. We cannot afford such let grievances tear us apart. In fact, reaching out to our Swedish brother might be even more beneficial to us exactly because of their position in the pact, mostly free to determine their own policies, yet with an eye on German politics and knowledge of their tactics. Sweden could provide us with some wonderful insight on how to counteract the Reich when they strike. As for themselves, it would allow them to prove to the Reich and the world at large that they are not merely the lackeys of the fear and American aid. Norway has been in a precarious position since we broke free from, from the Reich. Allies are hard to come by in Europe, where everyone lives in fear of the Reich's retribution. America may lie far across the Atlantic, but their aid was vital in the last war. Efforts to reach out to the Americans have proven successful. In a constant battle for influence over the nation of the world, the USA has proven eager once more to provide aid to Norway. To prevent German reconquest of the country, the American military has seemed to fit to provide us with military advisors and weapons shipments to rebuild the shattered Norwegian army. It's only a matter of time before it can once more stand on its own two feet. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Import international equipment. The military and industrial complex is already on its slow way to recovery while it in, in a while it'll be able to supply our troops with their guns but with the germans now, menace now looming we need these guns now and it's not only the simple farms that will need to initially produce in numbers more now than ever we need modern capable armaments of all kinds and the newest vehicles and aircraft available if we're to show the hun we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them this is where our newfound allies will get to prove their commitment to our cause we will ship in great amounts of fresh equipment both within Europe and across the pond for the right, right price, of course, and set up trade agreements for, uh, for, for, for more shipments in the future. Yeah, that would be good. American advisors. Just like we expected, Washington was more than receptive and enthusiastic, really, to our initial attempts at a reproachment. We can now begin the process of furthering this relationship and integrating ourselves into the OFN, along with the benefits that shall come with it. Our first request shall be simple yet effective. We will ask for the arrival of American military officers in Norway as advisors. <coughs> They shall monitor our military organization along with their own staff and introduce to our concept of modern warfare that we have, been, we have missed on during the Aku's Passion, and which we will require if we are to exercise with, and God forbid, alongside OFM military forces in the near future. Yes, please. But Sweden refuses. Norway has been in a precarious position since we broke free from the Reich. Allies are hard to come by in Europe where everyone lives in fear of the Reich's retribution. Our brothers in Sweden, while forced to remain in the German sphere of influence, have no love for the hegemon in Germania. Efforts to reach out to the Swedish government, however, have failed. <laughs> Stockholm is unwilling to part with the military equipment and even more unwilling to risk any annoying their German masters. We have to forge your own military? Regrettable. So much for Nordic cooperation. Uh, so we can't do that one. If you'd like to read about this one, please go right ahead, but since we can't do it, oh well. I don't know if Norway can join the OFN, but that'd be really cool if we could. That'd actually be really, really cool. But hey, 2.4 billion, 2.24 billion in GDP, not bad. Oh, if only Sweden could have helped us out. <coughs> it is a shame. Quite a shame. Cool. And then the Northern Light. When we first set out to rebuild a free, stable Norway, most of the world at best silently cheered our valiant struggle, at worst condemned it as useless or even traitorous. But all con concurred that we were fighting, we were only fighting against our inevitable demise. The truth be told, it just a file position back then. But now all doubts are silenced as Norway stands stronger than ever before. Not only have we achieved a successful functioning state loved and respected by its people, but also the respect and recognition of the international stage, not only acknowledging us as equals, but willing to fight for our freedom. Norway shines her northern light across the world, a light wild and free, and with the world on her side, free it shall remain. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, man. I, I don't know if we can actually join the OFN. I do not want to go to war with Germany, but Norway's finest would be kind of nice. But we'll try to get through this entire focus tree. Before we call it an episode, which we still got some time to do stuff. We must protect our homes. You bet we're going to protect our homes. But the national commitment. The light of our resistance burns brightly in Europe, scarring the despots who dare to look upon our work. To fall under the advance of a foreign army would be to extinguish the only legitimate bastion of freedom in Europe. If our fortress of democracy is stand strong against the violent tides of tyranny, it is imperative that we prepare for a potential assault upon the homeland. We shall proclaim a national commitment to maintain an army of great strength and size, powerful enough to resist any potential invasion. Which we get 15,000 more manpower. We must not allow our independence to be taken from us again. A little bit of lag, thank you. 
We must protect our homes? Yes. During the ox occupation, the Germans intended Norwegian or Norway to serve as a little more than a gigantic fortress, safeguarding enemy access to the North Sea and denying the Americans an obvious entry point for an invasion of the German heartland. These efforts were largely successful, and the endless lines of coastal fortifications that pollute our coastlines certainly make the people make, make safer than the Germans. Make the people feel safer than against the Germans. Not only that they should, our advise adversary no longer has to cross an ocean to get to us, and our ports were quickly getting outdated even before the collapse of Nor Norway left most of it left most of the fort line to fall apart unattended. Man, this reading is not good. The theory behind the forts is sound, however. And not only do we have a tremendous head start to reinforcing our lands, but also develop the production chains to build even more newer and better forts. We will fortify the beaches, the cities, the countryside. We will fortify until there's no inch of land that our cannons cannot protect. Good, good, good. We can get some marines. Uh, we can grab some aerosol. It doesn't really matter to me. Wartime industry, so we're done with our land doctrine. And let's see. Better uh, artillery? Yes, please. We must protect our homes. That's probably the most important thing to do. And reestablishing the officer corps. Every army leader gets more attack and defense. Not bad. Oh, oh, there we go. We get a bonus research for land doctrine. Oh, that sucks. Should have waited, but happy 1965, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. Norway is free. The people are stronger and united more than ever. We accepted the communists. We accepted the German settlers. Truly an inclusive Norway. LBJ is inaugurated as the president. Well, LBJ all the way with him, I guess. And then, reestablishing the officer corps. During the occupation, the Germans imprisoned our entire officer corps, the least so we were told, and completely halted the training of new ones, preferring instead to supervise the collaborating troops with the hair zone. What this means for us now is that our army is essentially headless, and even the foreign staff we have received from our allies only barely cover up our enormous lack of officers, and only temporarily. Obviously, this matter must be resolved urgently, in fact, more so than the actual restructure of our armed forces, considering how long it will take to bear fruit compared to the latter. To ensure that our brave boys will be led will be led to the charge only with the best of leadership. The nation's military schools will be triumphantly reopened and accept all the bright minds who wish to serve in Norway's high command. Hey, Novosibirsk. The linchpin of Russia has been united. Also, I do want to let you know from the last episode from when we play, first played as Norway, this is a completely different campaign. Like, I did not continue on from that one. I had to basically restart the entire thing, which didn't take too long to get to this point here, but, you know, whatever. The birthplace of giants. Army reforms. Nice. Entrenchment speed plus one is okay, but... Birthplace of Giants. Norway was never a particularly populous land, and the occupation has only left our numbers more diminished than ever, in fact. Some doubt whether so few people could ever hope to go the line against, or hold the line against Ger the German hordes. But it matters little what people think. Go tell the Soviets that the Germans had never had enough men to take them on. The Norse people were once the greatest warriors, and that kind that spread fear to emperors. We shall once again become those men. If our enemy has five times more men, we will make each one of our own count for six of theirs. Ten times more, twenty. And it matters little if to our agents of death. Soon the world will tremble upon their sight. Nice. Fortify? Oh, we'll fortify Oslo first, I guess. We get more war support, which is nice. Radar stations, anti-air, improves Oslo's land of coastal force levels by three. It costs us a lot more money. It's fine. It doesn't really matter to me. Hopefully it doesn't matter to you, too, because we're we'll building, building, spending, 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 spending. Supplying the troops, though. Wow, this is a very short focus uh, description. That's okay. National debt will increase. That's totally fine. The saying that an army marches on its stomach is old as war itself. Our troops need equipment of all kinds to be effective, so we may have to make sure that they actually get it. So actually, we have enough time to read maybe... Oh, army professionalism. Among cliffs born. Norway is a nation rugged and inhospitable even in its geography, with the towering Scandinavian mountains are taking up more space than anything else, and spending all the way to the coast with its complex networks of fjords. But if those conditions make life tenuous for the people born and raised on the majestic mountains, they can make it a living heck for any outsider trying to force his way through the nation, and we must make ourselves sure of it. This stage of our army training will include stationing the troops on the mountainside, engaging in drills and f live fire exercises for entire weeks, including a five-day exercise of the living off the sparse mountain lands with no outside supply. It'll be rigorous, barbarically so perhaps, but they will come out true men along cliffs born, who will feel the mountain as their home and deny the passage from any enemy. And we'll do this one first. Nice. Just let time go on for now. Better artillery, sign us up. And repurpose their planes. The Germans are terrible, unredeemable fiends the world would be much better without, but they sure know how to make a fine plane. And it just so happens that the Nazis left a good amount of these planes in our hangars during the sudden leave. Perhaps some have been outdated, but all leagues better than what we can produce ourselves. Some of our pilots already have experience flying these models, and under their instruction, the rest will be up to speed in no time. Excluding those to be sent to our R&D program for reverse engineering, the rest of the craft shall have their swastikas painted over and sent to the skies immediately. Bombing the Huns with the same planes they used against the bomb they used to bomb us with. A beautiful image, is it not? It is quite beautiful. And more uh, GDP? Yes, please. Supply the troops. Ooh, that's blueprints are okay. Everyone must do their part. Yeah, the draft under fire. We'll repurpose the planes first. How about that? 
and then we must protect our families. It is the duty of the Norwegian population to rise up and defend the country from those who wish to push us back into the dirt. The people of Norway will be called upon to protect all that we hold dear. We must protect our king and our country. We must protect our liberty and our democracy. We must protect our wives and children in an age of tyrants. My, any populace that refuses to fight is a populace with no will to survive. Pretty much, we get some more uh, army XP. We get some more air XP, but no naval XP. Huh. We don't have that many ships, of course, though. So. Oh, let's do Fortified Throndelag. Cool. Nope, oh, air assault. Marines are done. It is 65. I don't want to do that one. Uh, let's grab some of that, and then we'll grab some of this. Flamethrowers. I love flamethrowers. Patrol the North Sea. The Germans have lost, thus far left us alone to tend to their problems at their homeland, but can you really know what the dudes are planning? The invasion in 1940 was a dishonorable surprise to strike, and only a fool would expect the Nazi scum to give us a warning this time, now that they have none to fear. Our reconnaissance, aircraft, and coast defenses ships serve no purpose collecting proverbial dust at the stations when the enemy could strike at any moment from now on. All available forces will be organized and sent on regular patrols across the North Sea to keep vigilant for any signs of German forces mobilizing towards their direction. And may God have mercy on us and make these patrols serve as nothing but an expensive exercise. More enabled to be an air XP now. Very good. Followed up with... Uh, we could probably supply the troops. That's not too bad. We could get more factories and we could really use these factories. Yeah, two more factories is not much, but we get more artillery, which is great. More motorized equipment, which is great. We have a little bit more population. 0.6 total eligible core population sucks. Of course, we did do military austerity, but so what do you expect? We got some poverty, traditional rules, segregated regiments, war support is kind of low. Which actually affects your total manpower, huh? I didn't realize that. Cool. Doesn't matter, though. Doesn't matter. I just hope that German chances goes to, war, goes to war with us last compared to all the other nations. Or just doesn't go to war with us at all. But we got to be supplying the troops. Nice. What are the divisions like? Oh, we can't even... We still can't enter these? Oh, that sucks. We can't even train them. Oh, that is suckerinos. But I guess we'll improve, be trying to improve our equipment. With the newfound military industrial capacity, soon enough, every Norwegian will be at the smart end of a rifle, pointing the business end of the German's head, except that presently, this rifle happens to be exceptionally mediocre. Unfortunately, the German's dependence on armaments from home meant that the blueprints and procedures of modern firearms were not between the gifts they left they left us on their departure, and what factories are currently operational still output 30s era equipment. And after that absolute boom that our military technology has undergone ever since the war, supplying your army with 20-year-old equipment is somewhere between unacceptable and suicidal. We must put our brightest minds to work on designing the weapons of the modern age so our troops will be able to march to battle without either the proverbial sticks and stones or foreign hand-me-downs. Nice. We're done with the land auction armor. We really, we literally have no armor, so do some external fuel tanks. Why not? Any more for the budget, please? Yeah, improving our equipment would be good. We don't have that many more focuses left. Hungry goes into isolation. Goodbye, Hungry. Hope you have a good time. I do apologize for like reading things very, very quickly. It's just I want to I want to move through this episode and see what will happen. I'm really interested to see what will happen if Germany does try to strike us. I would love to be able to join the OFN, though. I really would. But everyone must do their part. As long as a man holds the necessary skills to repel the hovering jackboot, he is a credit to his nation. If the population of Norway can properly defend itself, we have a fighting chance of resisting any invasion. The government will hereby impose mandatory combat training on the civilian populace to ensure their ability to protect themselves in the worst case scenario. This training will be basic but valuable and conducted with the highest regards for their safety. At least for a while. And we can also go ahead and read about the draft because it's pretty short. Questions surrounding the nation's conscription has arisen through the highest circles of government. There are many figures who argue that for the sake of ensuring our security, their military draft must be extended. Their rivals, meanwhile, are claiming that enforcing such an extension would only lead to public resistance and that their draft is acceptable in its current form. We shall hereby hold a debate so that the government shall resolve this matter once and for all. Oh boy. Oh boy. More defense and soft attack? Yes, please. Good. Everyone must do their part. And we'll also read another focus. Unless we... Uh, oh, we actually have some debt. That's not good. No, no doubt. Eternal Vigilance. The condition upon which God has given liberty to the man is eternal vigilance. This is what was taught to the world the hard way with the lightning war. This is what was taught to us during the Vesa Ubel. And now that we've paid for our short-sightedness in full, we will make sure this lesson is never forgotten. Thankfully, the wonders of modern technology allow us to survey our territories like never before. We shall invest heavily into developing our own domestic radar technologies and installing them all across our shores. And along with the talented cryptographers of the new generation, they will at all times keep a watchful eye over Germania and whatever sins they plan on committing to next and got about four days left three days we lose some political power but at this point political power doesn't really mean anything to us now does it 
Telemark, fortified, very good. And we'll do Eternal Vigilance. And the draft under fire. Norway is a democracy now, and with the upholding of a free and democratic system comes the challenges of accepting the difficulties that come with it. For now, the people of Norway have resorted to mass distress over the continuation of a certain policy which has maintained the guarantees of safety for those which protest it now, one proclaimed via the influence of the Malorg's years of the past. However, one also that served to take away the freedoms of the youth within a free country. One of the most controversial issues of the 20th century, the draft. On the one side, conservative hardliners maintain their wealth support for the drafting program to be upheld and continuously dig in the heels further to keep the policy intact. Membership within the coalition formulated that the maintenance of a powerful military insurance to guarantee on the freedoms of all Norwegians, and that any threat from the outside world would be equally met by those who sacrifice time and work in the name of a national peace, prosperity, and justice. Battle-hardened veterans, fundamentalists of Norwegian culture, strict political militarists within the Storting, all those who've been beaten, bruised, and broken by the Nazis' heel due to the lack of superior military forces to stand up against their opp oppressors. On the other hand, however, the rising representatives of the growing progressive movement within Norway, there are a variety of representatives who have come together to stand as defiers to the conservative wall. Rather than continue the forced conscription of the youth into the Norwegian military, the coalition seeks to undo the drafting process for the sake of Norway's economic, political, and societal unity and prosperity. Rather than live in a continuous state of fear, the progressives made up of economic cliques, student organizers turned leaders, and labor representatives of the nation seek to move on from the terror that that was a Nazi occupation and truly create a positive democracy, one to allow for the Norwegian people to live as they like. As the politicians read John, the nation has come to a standstill in schools, businesses, and even city centers. Some of them, the youth, hide in fear of having to go towards a path they were never prepared for, on the other hand. Some seek to do their forefathers proud to maintain the shield they built in the military. As the protests and speeches grow louder, a decision must be made for the sake of our children that we must tear down the draft, one-year draft, or for the sake of a country that we must uphold the draft. Honestly, like, I don't think there'd be any question. You have to uphold the draft. Did you not just see what the Germans did to, to you know, the Netherlands? <laughs> There's also rights to protect by Poland. I mean, holy crap. You have to have a draft. I mean, yeah, you have an ocean here, but they already crossed that ocean once. you got to be ready. You've got to be ready for any sort of conflict like that. But we're going to finalize and finish Fortress Norway, Fortify Vestlandet. i got to go to Norway sometime. But the role of women. As we continue to bolster the ranks of our patriotic army, controversial question awaits us. There are voices within the government suggesting that women be allowed to participate in the military to boost its strength and size. They argued that many women fought bravely in the Malorg resistance and their desire to protect their nation bears no shortage of determination. Others, however, have claimed that the battlefield is no place for such a gentle sex and that women can courageously play their part elsewhere. The government will prepare for a great debate. Should women be allowed into the military? If so, what exactly should the roles be permitted to take? But we shall create the home guard. After the first time his home is invaded and his brothers and sisters enslaved and slaughtered, one tends to not repeat his old mistakes. We should never assume again that our army, as fine-tuned fine a fighting machine as it may be, as our allies, as committed as they may be, will be enough, for as long as we deal with such monsters as those who keep eyes over us the sea, over the sea, we must be willing to keep fighting the last inch of this blessed land. For this purpose, the Heimvernet will be established for the first time, modeled after the valiant, valiant British Home Guard who fought against the sea lion. Uh, this rapid mobilization force consisting of auxiliary forces, reserve troops, and volunteers ineligible for standard service will be tasked with defending the home front from any potential invaders and give their lives so our troops can solidify their, li their lines. Yeah, lines. Oh, four more divisions. Nice. And some of this. Yes, please. 60s. Yes. Mountaineers. Yes. Yes. Cut. Cut. Cut down. Yes. Oh, boy. We saw some death with the unheard patriots. The 20th century brought about a continuous clash between the tradition, traditions of old and next step forward. Every corner of the globe was affected as empires fell and more grew out of the ashes, while men and women toiled, fought, and died for the guardian of the past, battling against a progression to the future. The Second World War proved this as the question of who was a true soldier of the country blurred the lines as men and women took up arms against those dreaded invaders as the male dominance of the military dominated the past while women continuously proved competent in battle. Now the question is raised once more in Oslo. As the battle lines continue to be drawn, so Norwegians have continuously argued that while the military must be open further, women deserve the pride to serve alongside their fellow countrymen. But not on the battlefield, the country needs them too much for that, as one key representative of the coalition argues. To this end, however, the coalition remains unstable, as despite the great levels of support from some older, more conservative blocks of representation, infighting over the possibility of combat roles or not have torn the group apart from one another. This level of infighting controversy has ignited rounds of dissatisfaction from within the sortum, or storting. However, the opposition has stood out resolute against the difficulties of the fundamentalist forces within the legislation. In this, the small coalition representing a variety of women's groups have argued for the full allowance of women into all recognized military positions, including combat positions, despite the small group of support. The fiery rhetoric and calling upon the female members of the fiery Norwegian resistance, leading to the Milorak, have allowed for the group within the legislature to continuously grow the powerful cause backing them. Thus, as Norway once was, the government within the country has become a battle waging over control of the country's direction. Traditionalists and progressives battle in the halls of the government, reminding Norwegians across the country of the battles they had fought to get here and who to honor for such valiance. Open up the auxiliary rules. 
arms and enforce select opening of combat roles, women are still soldiers, they're equal. Total service equality. Hmm. We could use a manpower. Um, even if we open up the roles of women, they're, we're going to get slaughtered probably anyways. Um, hmm. We open up the draft. Let's be progressive. Let's be very progressive here, maybe. Hmm. I, I, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I want to be progressive. and I just, just Women soldiers are still soldiers. They're equal. But if I ever play Norway again, I would like to choose that one for when we go libertarian socialist. So we went with liberal democracy, not a conservative democracy or even fascist or authoritarian democracy. So we like maybe a little bit of progress. So uh, open up auxiliary roles. Let's go with open up the auxiliary roles. Uh, we're not conservative though. Combat roles. Uh, ban from service. Total service equality. Wait, uh, where is this? Ban from service. Women banned from service. Military assistance, non-combat, combat roles, non-combat only. So we, we're just going straight past military assistance. Combat roles, non-combat roles only. Seems kind of conservative. So let's enforce select openings of combat roles. Let's do that one. Because we're a liberal democracy, we have army reforms, which is pretty good. Uh, our American advisors, which is pretty good. King Olaf V gives us more stability. Uh, uh, of course, we have a lot of austerity, but hey, it is what it is. And we will finish this with Norway's finest. Finally, our extensive reforms are rapidly coming to completion. Our entire military structure has been turned on its head and rebuilt from the ground up stronger and Norway. <clears throat> is now in possession of not only a ragtag group of revolutionaries and peasants, but a true elite army, even by European standards. Acclimized to some of the harshest conditions of the planet and ready to take on anyone who dares step on the sweet land again. Till Dovre fell. We get more organization, recovery, and plus 1.5, not 1, not 2, but 1.5, entrenchment. And for everything we have, we get more mobilization, speed, attack, and defense on core territory, and defensive war penalty, stability modifier, plus 50%. Brought oh, look at that! Can idealism survive in these dark times? Oh. Very cool. Very cool. I don't think I've usually seen Soblin unify in the Far East, but hey, you know what? I guess there's a chance for anything to happen. So we have Omps probably going to be leading around. Samara might win. I don't know. This is pretty, this is pretty weird. But Central Siberian Federation under Novo Sibirsk, which I still need to play as, under Pokrishkin Partnership in China. That's kind of cool. The Far Eastern... Hello, Valerie. And, of course, Omsk under Yazov. Man, ultra-nationalism. I love ultra-nationalism. Oh, the Ulster... Oh. What? Do these, does the Ulster army have, like, a focus tree? Who are you? Ian Paisley. No? That kind of sucks. Maybe so. Oh, look. Slightly more manpower. Slightly. Slightly, 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 slightly. Wow, we are very divided here in uh, Norway. Despite us opening up to everybody, maybe except for no actual Nazis, we're uh, we're not looking too good. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. But happy 1966, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. We're just sitting here and cutting down some national debt. GDP hopefully goes up. And you know what I love about the Norwegian government? They don't believe in interest on the debt. So, beautiful things. No, it's fine. It's all right. There we go. Maybe we'll get some sort of end focus, end decision, end event. Hopefully, look at that. Army reforms. Beautiful. For everything we have. Um, I guess we could probably wait until Borman tries to invade us. I think he invades us eventually, right? Ooh. Old Berg. Level 6 defense is pretty nice. Oh, we've actually maximized you guys out too. Nice. And then for this one, we will grab... Oh, Arnold Redhold. Level 5 defense is pretty good. Reconnaissance, planning speed. We need to get 10% more infantry defense. What is better? Uh, probably, oh, uh, you get plus 10% infantry defense, but you get plus 10% more defense, period, anyways. He's got more attack. This guy does have better planning and max planning and better supply consumption. He does Fort River attack. Chance to get wounded goes down. Uh, he is an organizer, so more planning speed. That doesn't really matter. Um, overall, we'll probably choose. You can always become an infantry leader later on. And we're not going to attack. We won't scavenger probably because we don't have enough supplies. But I think that's probably going to be it for us then. Just because you'd probably have to wait until Germany comes really knocking. Go defensive. And do that one too, maybe. Just because, yeah, I don't think there's really anything left. You're not really supposed to play as Norway just because they don't have that much content. And actually, as when I load up this game again, um, it's sad that this nation is unplayable. But obviously, they had focus so I was interested in playing them. So, oh boy. Uh, recon companies, I guess we'll end it there then. You know, it is what it is. So, if you enjoyed this campaign... It's pretty short, but if you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I'll see you tomorrow in a different campaign. Thanks for watching, have a tremendous rest of your day.